Hey everybody, Bearded Rogue here. Um, so Maggie Bot's looking for things to uh, to watch uh, as far as videos go, and uh, asked her what she would be interested in hearing about. And so uh, she suggested that I brainstorm a Euro game about wrestling. So this is something that kind of encompasses the two major loves of my life as far as hobbies go. And it's something that I've been interested in doing already. Um, I've had several different brainstorms about how I would do it or what kind of um, ideas I would pursue with it, but I haven't really taken any of them anywhere. Um, my initial conception of the game actually would have worked very similar to uh, the networks, actually. Um, except instead of shows aging over time, um, you would have, you, you, first of all, I think any wrestling game that is a Euro game has to be about the economics or the ratings of wrestling or the, the overall popularity of wrestling. It can't be about the action in the ring. Like the action in the ring is really cool. It's what draws people into wrestling. Um, but it's not very Euro. Now, one thing about it is, is that it is all pre-scripted. It's all planned. It's all known. The outcomes are known. It's booking. Um, so you're promoting fights that you already know the results for, which makes it very much like an economic resource management type game. Your wrestlers are your resources, and you're managing their popularity and their wins and losses and their storylines to try to increase the overall money they bring in and the ratings you get uh, as well. So like I said, my original version was a lot like the networks in that you had um, wrestlers and then each wrestler could acquire um, could acquire push or heat. Um, I hadn't decided on an official term, but the worldwide wrestling role playing game actually uses heat for all of it. Like it's it's basically your you know how hot you are as far as a commodity goes. And so, wrestlers would have some basic stats that would determine what their ratings would be, and you'd kind of want to match up wrestlers that, um, in different ways. So, like, if you had a wrestler with really high stats and a wrestler with really low stats, it would be basically a squash match. And so, you'd want to, basically, your goal is to try to make the wrestler with the good stats look even better. And so, you know, they would get some additional heat from that. Um, or some additional push from that. Um, you want to do the same kind of thing. So, so it depends. So the ugh, man, I'm rambling. So you said brainstorm. So this is how I brainstorm. Um, so my initial idea was that you would take matches, and then you would assign wrestlers to those matches, and the matches would have different effects. So like a squash match would let you build up one wrestler who's really good using a wrestler who's not so good. Um, you could have, um, you know, major blow-off matches for feuds, championship matches, um, things that will draw ratings. So, the better your wrestlers are, which would be their base stats, whatever those are, plus however much push they have, um, would determine how much money you would bring in, which would determine how much, you know, you had to pay these wrestlers, um, and how much, like... A uh, Hell in a Cell match or a ladder match or a uh, match that involves a lot of extra stuff beyond just the ring that you're already paying for would cost more to put on, but it would draw more ratings. Um, and you'd have wrestlers with various stats or wrestlers who would give you bonus... Um, bonus ratings based on the match type they're in. Like, uh, one example is, um, Jeff Hardy, well, the Hardy Boys, the Dudley Boys, and, uh, Edge and Christian from back in the Attitude Era were known as ladder match specialists. Like, they, they fought in several matches involving tables, ladders, and chairs that were just phenomenal. So if you took any of those wrestlers who are known to be good in those kinds of matches and booked a match of that type with that wrestler, you would get additional ratings for doing so. Um, you'd still have to pay that wrestler, and you'd have to pay their opposition. You couldn't book a match without opposition. Um, and that's kind of where things started getting bogged down. But in the networks, the whole face-up draft, where everybody picks up their individual people that way, um, was one way that it could definitely work. I was talking about, you know, having like an indies, like the independent wrestling promotions where you could draw your wrestlers from. Everybody would kind of start with some... Um, you could have, each person would basically be a different federation booking their own card up against each other. Um, 
So, you know, for example, back in the day, WCW, ran by Ted Turner out of Atlanta, had a lot more money than the WWE did. Vince McMahon was not as rich as Ted Turner, so he didn't have as much money. But he had a lot more talent. Like, he had a lot more talent that he could develop. Whereas Ted Turner was kind of going out and buying the biggest names now, McMahon put a lot of effort into building up that push on his existing talent until they became star-level talents. Um, so he booked a lot of matches to get a lot of heat on people really quickly and built his own stars, whereas Ted Turner just kind of paid money for the people who already were stars and the twilight of their career and put them against each other. So those federations could have different asymmetric starting powers. One starts with more money, one starts with, you know, a handful more of the mid-card level wrestlers. Um... You know, you have, you know, ECW, which uh, specialized in the more hardcore type style of matches. You have them uh, have the ability to put on things like tables, ladders, and chairs matches and no DQ matches and stuff like that cheaper than uh, the other federations because it's just an assumed part of their cost because that's just how they operate. Is every match is like that. Um, so that was my initial idea, is basically everybody would have their wrestlers who were their resources, and then they would book those wrestlers, and, and, you know, you could play, like, the initial version also had, like, different cards that you could do, so you could play a promo card to have one of the wrestlers cut a promo, you know, trying to promote their match, and, um, that would add some more hype to the match and get you some more ratings, um, based on whatever that wrestler's stat was on the mic. Um, each wrestler had, had three stats. They had their, um, their charisma, their, um, in-ring work, and their mic work as their three stats. And some of the wrestlers had really high stats in all. Some of them were really good on the mic, so you wanted to use promos to try to promote their matches. Some of them were just really good technical wizards, and the matches themselves were going to be good. But if you couldn't get anybody to watch them, it didn't matter. Um, so I think being a fight promoter... Uh, is the way that you ter create a Euro game using wrestling. Um, I think that's the, the primary one. Um, if co-op games at all count, I think there's some room to be explored on creating a cooperative wrestling game, wherein both players play wrestlers who are cooperating to put on the best match possible. Um, this is would be very similar to... Uh, kind of how w the worldwide wrestling role-playing game actually rewards its people, um, the the people playing the wrestlers in the game, and that, you know, you're encouraged to, you know, there is a booker in that, like an official booker who chooses who wins, but everybody's working together to try to make it the best match possible and earn the most audience and become the most popular wrestler they can be. So there's incentives for you, even if you're the one losing the match. Um, and there are some wrestlers whose entire goal is to lose the match. You know, the jobber from the squash match before the guy who does the job and takes the loss. His entire job is to make people look even better than they already do. Like, his job is to be thrown around like a rag doll and make other people look strong. Um, you know, the veterans who are on their way out typically will take losses because they have a really high notoriety... Um, but losing to a young up-and-coming star can, like, put that star on the map and make them uh, an actual legitimate talent. So I think there's something to be said for, like, a cooperative wrestling game where both players are working together to put on the best, ma best match possible. And the way I would structure that is you would have... Each player would have a wrestler. You'd have, like, four players. Um, you'd want an even number of players, four players, six players. And then each player would have a match with each other player... And then whoever has the highest cumulative score of all of those would be the, the winner um, if you wanted to do it competitively. Um, if you wanted to do it cooperatively, then, you know, it'd still be semi-co-op in that, you know, I have a match with your wrestler and then, you know, you have a match with this guy's wrestler and, you know, all of us round robin that and then whoever has the most points wins. I guess you could make it a, a, um, a match like a... a, a um, competitive game like that, but it would still be semi-co-op and that you have to work with a different person each round. Um, so that could be another way to do it. Um, I'm not sure how Euro that is. There's not any take-that mechanisms in a game of that style. 
Um, it's not, uh, not very, like, cutthroat, take that, dudes on a map, rolling dice. Um, because, because the outcomes of game, uh, because the outcomes of wrestling matches are fixed, are known, um, rolling dice really seems out of character with me. Like, we know how this is gonna end up, there's no reason we need to be surprised at a, you know, an ending. Like, the people who are involved in the match know who's winning and who's losing, and it's much more about getting their stuff in and looking good than it is, um, you know, trying to force an outcome, uh, to go a certain way. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of some random meandering brainstorming. Um, I'd love to do the fight promoter type game that was originally, uh, my concept for Monday Night Wars, um, was the, uh, the name I was going with, um, and that's, Definitely one of the things that I'm uh, still interested in pursuing. I just... So many other games to design right now. It's one that I would really love to design, but I've never designed a game on that kind of a scope. Like, even a middleweight Euro is larger than anything I'm really working on. Um, most of my games are... I won't say light games. They're usually pretty complex, but they're card games. They're not Euro-style board games. They're definitely not economic games, because that's not my strong suit. Um, John, uh, Angry Tetris, um, that's much more his strong suit. Math is his thing. And so, um, you know, that's something that maybe he could uh, help me with in the future when I'm, we're not working on, you know, 16 other projects. But I want a Euro game about wrestling. I want multiple Euro games about wrestling because it very much is a, a Euro game in reality. It's not a one guy... Like, UFC is Ameritrash. UFC is one guy physically, or one woman, one, one woman, one man, physically trying to outskill and outfight another person. Not that that can't be a Euro game, but typically most Euro games aren't about conflict. So a game more about building a federation or creating a really fascinating match together um, seems much more like uh, what uh, would fit in that kind of a mold. So anyway... That's what I got uh, for now. I'm sure I'll come up with a whole bunch of other ideas, but, um, you know, hope that was entertaining, and uh, thanks for giving me something to talk about. Enjoy your day.